again, like I said, I'm a fan of your channel. And then I have a question about a couple videos that you post you posted. Not that I have really questions. I just want you to elaborate on it further from uh, what I've heard and just to pass the message on to people from my channel. So the first video, now you got to scan your brain back for when you made this video, but five tips before marriage. The one I love, and I love all of them, first off, you know, the finance, the, you know, family boundaries, kids, religion, but the one I want to talk about is complaints. You brought up a, a great subject there. When it comes to complaints, keep everything in-house. And I love, I love that tip because, again, everybody, you know, everybody has their own view of marriage. If you have a complaint about your spouse, then, uh, and you're going outside sources trying to get input, they're going to give you their view on marriage. So if you have an issue, you want to deal with it in-house and not, you know, outsource it to friends, family members, and things like that, because they're going to give you their opinion. But, I, of course, I'm just paraphrasing what you said. So can you elaborate more on that? Stanley, either one. Could you repeat the question? If you, if you mentioned um, your your point on complaints, like keeping any complaints right. within the marriage and outsourcing it, basically telling other people. Mm -hmm. So elaborate more on that. Yeah. Okay. So with that, I don't mean, and when we say like keep it within the marriage, we don't mean keep it like fully, fully within the marriage because there are going to be times as a couple that you won't be able to figure out on your own and that you're going to need help. But what we mean by keep it inside is keep it inside when it comes to family and friends and other parties that are possibly biased. And then when you guys are in like a state where you're not fighting, your marriage is in a good place, you um, basically we're just saying have an appointed third party that if you do have trouble, this is the agreement, this is who we're going to um for stan and i it's a couple from church um they didn't know me first they didn't know him first they met us at the same time um or that could be like an agreement of oh we're gonna go to this marriage counseling practice if we're just reaching a like a dead end uh keeping it in collaborating a little more if i go to my friend and i'm complaining about marriage because i need someone to talk to about it that's just going to create biases. So my friend is going to hear what I'm saying and she's going to, she or he is automatically going to be on my side. My family, anyone who has known me first and has met me first will automatically be on my side. And then the next time they meet, they're going to see Stan in a different way. They probably won't like say it to his face, but they're just going to see him in, in their head. It's going to be rolling um, as, oh, Lynn told us so-and-so about Stan. And that's just like something that we have seen um, through other relatives. And it's just, we don't want to walk into a room where it's like uncomfortable that people know this about us. And it doesn't mean really, like disrespect Stan, it's disrespecting us as a couple. It's putting our name down as a couple. So I love it, I love it. And again, sorry everybody for the technical difficulties I'm having on my side. But um, I love everything that you said. And again, and it's funny, and, and the reason why I'm a fan of your channel is because just like you, I'm in a interracial relationship also. My wife's Albanian. I'm American from Detroit, nice. from uh, the hood of Detroit, matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I, I love to hear, I love to hear the different perspectives. And it's always good to hear, you know, people going through the same things that, you know, I went through and things like that. We've been married for 16 years. And if I say the wrong uh, year, Alex, please edit that out so my wife don't kill me. Um, but going to the going to the next question, I have again. So again, this is another video you guys did. Five things to do with your money when income increases. And then, of course, I've heard all of them. But the question I have for you guys is the step number four: invest extra money. What do you guys do as a couple to invest? the money when you start increasing your income uh, i know one is a traveling nurse and and i know also know one is smarter than the other one that was a good video um, but so what do you do as a couple to invest to invest where do you put your money and allocate it so so with our money first thing is like we don't the more money we make we don't increase our expenses so that way Correct. we can invest more 
uh, and the more we make, suppose you make extra 100, 200 or 1000 a, a week this week, we are already, we have, we have, we have stuff ready that we can put the money into. We just have to hit a button send. So we have set ourselves up in a way that if we make extra money, we have places to put it. So it's not like, oh, what do we do right now? Let's put it in a savings account. Maybe, no, we know where the money has to go. And for investments, it may be, it can be a property you're buying. It can be, uh, for, it, it can be the stock market. It can be gold which we invest in, or it can be something for a rental property, or it can just be a savings, which we are replenishing, which, yeah. Can I add to that? Also, like, if we have extra money, so, like, we, we're um, using, and we've talked about this in some of our videos, but, and we kind of have a plan as to how we're going to leverage when we're going to pay it off and when um, we're going to make our next big move. So if we have extra money, in a way, we just put it into the plans that we have already had and then we're ahead of plan we're ahead of time okay makes perfect makes makes perfect sense makes perfect sense 